predator at Six Flags Darien Lake has a reputation as one of the world's worst roller coasters. For years, I've heard people name this as one of the roughest wood coasters in existence. I don't think it's nearly that bad. In fact, I think this is actually a good ride and an extremely underrated coaster. Find out why in this review of Predator. In 1990, Darien Lake opened Predator as the state's tallest and longest wood coaster. This L-shaped wood coaster is placed by the water, which is a brilliant location, especially when you're looking out from the campground. Designed by Curtis D. Summers and built by the Din Corporation, Predator received praise in its early years, but things started to change over the next decade. Many of Din's coasters became rough. This issue was compounded by the fact that Six Flags purchased Darien Lake in the late 1990s. While Six Flags was at the forefront of the amusement industry for thrills, the chain wasn't known for maintaining their wood coasters the best. This coaster has gotten some track work through the years, and in 2010, it even received the trains from Holiday World's Voyage. But something more extreme almost happened a decade ago. When Hershend operated the park, they sent out a guest survey about a coaster named Lake Monster. It was advertised as a wood coaster with multiple inversions. The teaser showed two images. One was a corkscrew from Hades 360, which was a Gravity Group creation. But the other was the double barrel roll from Outlaw Run, which was a Rocky Mountain construction wood coaster at another one of Hershen's parks in Silver Dollar City. Maybe this was slated to be a ground up wood coaster like Outlaw Run, but Lake Monster's projected length was nearly identical to that of Predator, so it's fair to wonder if the ride was considered a candidate for a hybrid conversion. But those plans were scrapped when Hershen left the park in 2014 and Predator continued to run as is. Six Flags reacquired Darien Lake in 2018. Late in 2020, Great Coasters International revealed they would be installing Titan Track on Predator. This weld free steel track was designed to offer a glossy smooth ride. It could be either used for ground up or, in the case of Predator, retracking. The Titan Track was added to Predator for the 2022 season. It was only placed in one section, but is arguably the part that needed it most. It was the bank turnaround that some have coined the death turn. This part now rides smooth as glass but the same cannot be said about the rest of Predator. So will Daring Lake do more? I hope so. I would love a full RMC conversion, but Six Flags has not shown a willingness to invest heavily in Daring Lake in recent years. But to be honest, I think Predator has a good layout as is. It just needs to ride smoothly, so I would love to see more Titan Track added in the future to remedy this issue. It is possible to get enjoyable rides in Predator, but the ride needs to be experienced in specific seats. This can make or break your experience. I first experienced Predator in 2010. I got one ride and did not like it. I believe I rode in a wheel seat and I got the rough ride everyone else has described. When I returned to the park in 2019, I again rode Predator only once. This time, I took precautions and rode in the very front row. And much to my amazement, I didn't come off in pain. In fact, I really liked it. The ride had good airtime and was plenty tolerable, but the people behind me were screaming in agony. I knew I needed to try Predator multiple times in a variety of rows to get a full understanding for the coaster, and that finally happened in 2022. The key is to avoid a wheel seat or the back of a car. I say that with a lot of wood coasters, but it's especially the case with this one. You will feel every bump and imperfection in those wheel seats, and there are a lot of those in this course. But if you avoid those seats, Predator is tolerable, and if you ride in the very front, I'd actually say the experience is pretty smooth. That's the best seat on the ride not only from a comfort standpoint, but it also offers the best airtime. so I'll happily wait the extra few cycles if needed to get the best row. I've been to Darien Lake a few times, but I've never seen Predator with more than a station wait, and this is even with the ride running just one train. Maybe I've just gotten lucky, or maybe it's the ride's reputation, because this ride definitely has enough queue space to hold a two hour line. Now I've long heard that Darien Lake only had one train for all their coasters, but in my recent visit, you could see cars for another train in a backstage area adjacent to the lift for Predator. Not sure if that train is operable or if it's just a parts donor. The train in use has six cars. Each car is two rows of two, so the train can accommodate a max of 24 riders per cycle. And as with most PTC trains, riders are secured by a seatbelt and individual ratcheting lap bar combination. These restraints are fine for me. 
but you may want to hold on to the bar once checked. It is susceptible to lowering during the ride's bumps and valleys. Once dispatched, you navigate a few slow turns, and then you ascend the 95 foot or 29 meter tall lift hill. If you look off to your right, you'll get a nice view of the park. Then atop the lift, you get a nice view of the water in front of you. The train then turns 90 degrees before navigating the first drop, and if you're in those back cars, that drop gives a decent pop of airtime. This leads into the first of several camelbacks. This one gives a decent burst of airtime up front, but that's just a taste of what's to come. Then the descent gives an okay pop of airtime in the back. You then charge into the first turnaround. Up front, you are forcibly launched from your seat going into the element. It is the strongest airtime on the ride, and it's made even sweeter since you're simultaneously getting some laterals. This isn't the only time either, as many of Predator's Hills have a tendency to bank sideways at the apex. While the back row gets a small dose of laterals going into the turnaround, their time to shine is coming out of it. Riders back there get some laterals coming around the turn, followed by a good pop of air time on the descent. Next is a camelback that subtly turns to the right at the apex. This is yet another instance where those up front will get a powerful burst of air time and a lateral jolt together. Those in back forego the laterals, but they'll still get a decent pop of air time in the descent. Predator then heads towards the death turn. You rise upwards, getting some floater air time up front. You then navigate a 180 degree swooping drop. You 100% will notice the difference between the wooden steel track here. It sounds a lot different, and the change in tracking is unmistakable. It is super smooth. Those in back will get some nice laterals to the element. Those up front just get a pinch of laterals coming out of the turn. After a weird bit of straight track, Predator navigates back-to-back -back camelbacks. Both are pretty sharp and subtly bank left. Both of them give good pops of airtime and lateral jolt up front. The back loses too much speed to get the laterals over the top, but they'll still get a mild burst of airtime in the first one's drop. Back car riders don't get any airtime in the second one though. Predator then navigates a curved turnaround underneath the first one. You get some okay laterals, and then you get some fun head choppers, but the coasters seem to lose a lot of speed which hurts the return run. You have a bunny hill with a double down on the other side next. Those up front will get weakly lifted out of their seat going over the hill, but those in back do not leave their seat at any point. Then no one gets any air time on the next bunny hill. Predator then meekly turns upwards and to the side, hitting the final brakes. The train then rumbles back to the station, ending the 3,400 foot or 1,000 meter long coaster. So what would I rate Predator? This is a tricky ride to rate, but I'll settle on a 7 out of 10. If you ride in a wheel seat, the ride is worse than that. It can be a lot worse than that. The roughness really can be an issue in those seats. But if you ride in the very front row, I'd say the experience is better than a 7. This coaster is a guilty pleasure of mine in that row. It is rare to get this many instances of laterals and airtime simultaneously. The airtime isn't sustained, but it is abrupt and powerful up front. The experience weakens in other rows, but it's still decent if you avoid those wheel seats. Time will tell if Predator gets more work done, but I think the current experience is an underrated one if you sit in those right rows. So those are my thoughts on Predator at Six Flags Darien Lake. What are your thoughts on this wood coaster? Do you actually like the coaster too? Or are you not a fan? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.